Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and for today's video, I'm here to talk about a movie that's been out for quite some time now. However, I've only gotten to see it recently and I just have to talk about it. I'm talking about the 2016 film Pink and Grey which references a novel of the same title written by Johnny's idol turned author Shigeaki Kato. Now this one stars Nakajima Yuto and Suda Masaki with Kaho in the supporting role and it's just mind-blowing for me. It's definitely a movie that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I sort of understand that when I read through reviews and just commentary from people who have seen it. But when I dived into it, you know, not really grasping what it's entirely about, I... I was just mind blown by the cinematography. Obviously, the director is Isao Yukisada, who some works I've seen before, not a lot, but I've seen Reverse Edge, I've seen Naratage, so I sort of know his directing style. Um, but this one definitely takes it to like a different level, not necessarily on a higher or lower level as the other two movies that I've mentioned, but it is definitely another it's it's just something out there that is very distinct as well similar to how river's edge is filmed in a four by three claustrophobic type of um of of presentation pink and gray is also its own thing when it comes to like filmmaking now i before i dive into all these technicalities all the things that makes me want to geek out about this film at least cinematography wise start off by discussing what the plot is about the thing is as usual with me i would definitely want to recommend this movie however i feel like i would be spilling a lot of spoilers because it would be hard not to while discussing what i love about this film so whether or not you're in for that or whatever <laughs> just be aware that there are going to be spoilers ahead but i hope that you still keep on watching <laughs> Now, it is something that's very dark, very controversial. No wonder that when Shigeaki Kato released this in 2012 as a novel, it became a best-selling hit. Um, because, I mean, he's he has this perspective of an idol, and the movie discusses the dark layers of the entertainment industry moving on from uh, moving from music to filmmaking to just everything else that happens behind the scenes. A lot of people, at least from what I've seen online, have been speculating as to whether or not this is autobiographical or something like that. It's neither confirmed nor unconfirmed. And obviously, as explained in the film, you know, whatever we see on screen is always something that is not, that has bits of reality to it and at the same time, it's not. So, it's the film, if I were to summar summarize what the film is, it's definitely meta. It's a film within a film that scrutinizes the very nature of, of what it's trying to discuss. It revolves around three people, mostly just two people, but it's more of like really a triad. Um, a triad between Gochi, which is played by Nakajima Yuto, Riba, which is played by Suda Masaki, and Sally, which is played by Kaho. Now, when we start off with this film, as classic as Yukisada Isao's, um, most of his movies are, we dive into it thinking that we're in it for like a coming of age type of story because we see these three who create a bond as childhood friends who drift apart, who start to grow into their lives where Gochi dives into this world of being an idol, an actor, whereas Riva, you know, they shared this dream, but then afterwards he was just left behind, so that causes a rift in their relationship. And which in turn results to Gochi's suicide now when we dive like the first couple of frames of the film initially teases us this this um to call this this climax like we initially open with that sequence of gochi committing suicide and riba finding him and it was just 
crazy from there it reverts back it reverts back in time tells us their story the story of their friendship to the point that we get to care about these characters and we want to know what it is that led to Gochi's suicide however however in the middle of the film it suddenly transforms into something else so pink and gray is perfect as it sort of like also represents the filters literal filters that were used in this film where everything suddenly turns into black and white in the middle of it and then we discover that it is a film within a film that Nakajima Yuto who's playing Gochi is actually um, is actually Reba in real life this is him writing the story of his friend who committed suicide which is Got the real Gochi and Suda Masaki is no more than just an actor playing the role and then here we discover like the darker parts of the film that is made glaringly so because of the filter that was like covering the entire film um here we what i commend about this film a lot is not um it the shift was almost so sudden um that it 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 can it it has the tendency to go wrong from there but somehow it still worked and i feel like the the choice of shifting the filters as soon as this these realities start to like shift as well really help the narrative a lot because here we we were able to clearly distinguish what was the film or what were being made to believe in the beginning and then after that it transforms into this is the actual real this black and white thing that was supposed to be very vivid because it's real life is actually the one in black and white so it's 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 brilliant storytelling brilliant screenwriting brilliant directing in my opinion but what really made it stand out to me is the contrast of the like the contrast or the range that the actors had to have in order for the film to work nakajima yuto um obviously johnny's idols like i i i love my johnny's idols um and the thing is i feel like generally they as in in the early parts of their career even their senpais like they they really don't dabble into this kind of genres as early in their careers but for you to to do this and for for it to be i think this is like his first movie where he's the lead this is something that's really bold and very Good and it really showed how much he can do as an actor mainly because there's all of the characters that we've seen from the first part of the movie there is a complete 180 when it transforms into the second half of the movie Suda Masaki he's been acting for a while we like if you're a J drama fan you know his range as an actor so it comes to no surprise but for me the most surprising for this one would be yuto because i didn't really expect like i've seen some of his works but i didn't really expect it to be of this caliber especially given the theme of of the movie but what i like about it is all the actors transition and you see the nuances in their acting that are very like different from the first half to the second half and yet it still works it's not the complete like oh i'm watching an all like a different movie what is happening um it's not like it shifted completely in the middle and then you're it's like you're watching two different things and it becomes very convoluted and different it wasn't like that at all um it gets revealed that nakajima yuto was actually Reba playing Gochi in this film and we 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 explore that it's his obsession or jealousy of his friend and also this just seeking for understanding as to wanting to know this person that you've known your entire life then you realize that they're not exactly the person that you think they are it's it's this perception that is very similar to how we see people or actors on screen where 
sometimes we fall in love with the characters and not really the actors themselves and it's very similar to their relationship where Riba is sort of like fascinated or obsessed or jealous or putting the character of Gochi in a pedestal and then once he enters the industry himself as a result of Gochi's suicide um, he steps into his actual shoes and then he suddenly starts realizing all these different things about him that he didn't expect from Gochi. It's a hard it's hard to describe this film entirely just by talking about it because it definitely is a holistic experience when you're watching it. Um, I think some of the parts that I absolutely like about it is that are also the parts that a lot of people are calling out because for some reasons apparently a lot of Heisei Jump fans or Nakajima Yuto fans were so and even Suda Masaki fans were so frustrated at some of the sexual <laughs> scenes in the movie but it is definitely these are these are like things that are also vital in the film that discusses the rawness or the detachment of the characters into this world that they're in. Moving past that, we discover a lot of like controversial aspects of the industry, like for example, changing facts to fit it into movies, or sensationalizing like the idea of of an actor and an actress's death, um, and also discovering secrets that are so cruel and almost true like alcoholism um sexuality and just a, just the corruption behind the industry and also like the lengths that talents have to go through to do what they do as we know them and it's it's this crazy ride that isn't exactly for everyone as i would say like I think some people can find would find this movie boring if they're not really into it. But what I like about it is it definitely zooms in on the idea of the unreliable narrator in the most unreliable way possible. Here we see Nakajima Yuto's character, whether it be in the first part of the film or the second part of the film, to it's we're a part of this confusion that goes into his head of wanting to step into the life of Gochi to reconcile his confusion, his jealousy, his envy of him and in a way also wanting to understand him and then when we reach the conclusion of the film where he was a uh, he was trying to confront him. They start talking, he start asking him questions about like these things that he didn't know about him as his friend. And all, all Gochi can say was that, you know, it's very vague. He didn't really answer any of his questions, which, which proves to show that this is wishful thinking from a person who couldn't really get the right answers from his friend because his friend is already gone. Um, and in the end, when he started accepting that he wouldn't understand Gochi, he would never get the chance to understand him, or that he's just so confused and he, he let go of it, he, he stopped saying to himself that he understood him, that he knows him, etc. That's when everything started to have color again, which means that despite the confusion despite this film not giving us the answers that we want it delivered closure and in the most poetic way possible and it ended in full circle as to how these characters are introduced to us in the beginning the lighters are also very symbolic in a way because it's shown that one is plastic one is very like high and expensive and everything symbolizing both gochi and riba as a character but if you think about it it just serves the same purpose which is lighting things up so it definitely mirrors their characters as well and quite beautifully because the other lighter is pink and then the other lighter is gray um so this is a very smartly done film that's what i would say about it um 
it's it again i felt like i did a bad job of trying to explain what it's about um but really focused more on the technical aspects of it like how it is on film how it is technical wise cinematography in terms of the scoring was also very distinct in the two different parts of the film um it it's definitely it's it's definitely a dark film, a controversial film. It discusses a lot of topics that are very, that can be considered taboo, but at the same time with Japanese cinema, it's always been dabbled over and over again. It even taps into issues of um, incest in some way. But um, the thing that really captures this, captures my attention in terms of this film is how it is beautifully curated and put together to create this very otherwise convoluted and controversial narrative. Um, and again, as I've mentioned, I haven't seen much of Yuki Sada Isao's work, only two past films, but he always has this thing with his direction that makes his films like no matter how dark or depressing the themes might be, it would still leave you in awe for some reason. And yeah, but it's definitely not every but it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I think that's the same thing with River's Edge as well. I'm not sure about Naratage because obviously it's a very it's it's a love story, but the storytelling there is also a bit non linear in a way and contemplative. So but his work as a director is just it, it it definitely has its own style artistically in a way that i absolutely love and it's 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 glaring for pink and gray and the acting is also superb and i feel like if you're up for the challenge this is definitely a film that you should watch at least once i feel like it's not a movie that you would want to rewatch over and over again but if you love japanese movies if you understand these sort of like undertones that they usually explore in some of their more mature or adult um um adult uh, filmography then definitely i suggest that you go ahead and give this a watch because for me i i really i really loved how this was done and i'm kind of frustrated with myself that I've had this on my queue for quite some time now and I've only seen it now but yeah <sighs> with that said thank you so much for watching this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you again soon in a new one bye